Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Carl David Butler. And today's topic is going to be about enhancing your offense using exotic formations. Uh, and what I mean by exotic formations is a formation that you wouldn't necessarily always run, or is not it's not a formation that you would um, you, you would use all the time. It's a formation that you you know that you would need maybe special personnel for, etc. etc. Uh, or things that you find along the way that you want to utilize. Uh, and every year when when we play, we're already multiple offense anyway, but in my case, there are multiple. So I, I will look at I will look out through when, when you're doing film and watching and clinic and stuff. And you pick up, you know, you watch various offenses, you pick up bits and pieces. And I always think, how can I make these items fit what I do without changing my beliefs, you know, my constraints and my thought process. Nine times out of ten, it usually ends up with being a formation or two that I can, you know, bastardize a little bit and make it fit my scenario. Uh, today's weapon of choice is going to be pistol wing. Now, I have no affiliation to any kind of pistol wing or wing T offense. It genuinely is just a look and how a foul pistol wing, should I say, is what is what um what this is about how we're running and what we do and so that's what we're going to take our journey through today and uh i'll do another video on our on our other uh exotic formation from 2019 in another video uh, but i think it's a nice nice little uh subject to talk about and obviously we all trying we all trying to gain that extra advantage like extra yards and, and more importantly you know getting them in as soon as possible and these are the, these are the, the three key values and what i would say the benefits of when you're doing installing uh, exotic formations or anything new into your offense, I mean, in my case, it has to be cheaper install. You know, we want to be, we only want to be, want to be moving two or three things and, and adding one or two rules. We don't want to have new blocking schemes, new alignments, assignments. We just want to, have, we just want to do what we do and make it fit that look as much as we possibly can. And therefore, it has to be minimal teaching. So we, we don't want to teach nothing new and i'll talk about how we how we do that in in this formation from our from our, from our uh, playbook in a little bit so minimal teaching we don't want to be putting it there you know on this play you're going to have to do that you know there's no there's no actual wing t element or or anything of, of real genuinity in this in what we do and my favorite thing there is expansion without congestion which means that we want to you know if we if we only have six to eight plays that we that we rep all the time, uh, we want to fill that void with, and we, we use a lot of motions and formations to expand our expand our look, expand our um, our volume of, of plays. But we're not really expanding our volume of plays. So for me, if we can expand our our looks and what we do, but without the congestion of adding new uh, verbiage or new um, uh, ideals, and that for me is is the key three elements when you're adding anything new to, to your offense and in in our case in the when we when we when i looked at the pistol wing and i, I thought well i could take this formation and run with it you have to ask yourself what are the words why are you going to do it what what's the reason why you you want to run this formation here so in this one in this situation you assess the personnel what have you got who who can run it what what can you do you know, in your offense, that you could think, I'll come out and fit there, I'll come out and fit there. In our case, rule number one was our quarterback wasn't a quarterback, he was a converted uh, convertible receiver. So we knew straight away before we took a snap on preseason that we'd have issues and pity issues with throwing the football at times and being consistent. And, you know, all the the logistics that come along with putting the guy back there who's not a, not a quarterback. And has absolutely zero experience. You know, we we understand the um the parameters involved and what it and what's involved in it. So we know we know what what, what it's going to take. And for me, when I when I looked it up and I drew I drew it up, I could get my two best athletes at the wing position and give them the ball with no teaching, no additional um, learning. I could get my two. Fastest guys next to the quarterback and give them the ball, and that's and that's one of the major reasons why we did this. Uh, and my next point there is you give your playmakers the touches. We we know we know we found 
And if we're having struggles throwing the football, and you know, we could run, we could run regular jet, and we haven't regular jet, but because we were multiple offense and we and we were um, tempo, we wanted to do a lot or seem to be doing a lot in a in in um at a quick pace. So to get your players the touches, to a keep the the chains moving, and if we can't get a uh, score points, if we can't score points. At the very least, keep our defense off the field a little bit to let them catch their breath and keep us going. Because the, the defense, you guys know that if we've got a, a QB back there, we get our TV problems with that. You know they will, you know they will uh, give you that leeway and they will they will go out there and, and fight for you. But you have at times you can't keep going three and out, three and out, three and out. You have to give them some time to regroup, have a breather, and assess it. So all we were looking to do is get our our fastest and our best athletes the ball as often as possible, in as many ways as possible. And this is one of the solutions that I found worked best with very minimal uh, teaching and very minimal uh, learning. Uh, with that, I got, I'll, I'll put the uh, bolt on because when you um, when you bolt, you know, I, I always say that these formations are bolt on for me. So they just bolt on to what we do. Nothing changes in, the, in our rules and in our, in our own systems. It's just a bolt-on formation, and we make it fit by just screwing the pieces together and uh, making what we do fit this formation. And what I also like in this is that in in 2019 we were no huddle up tempo team, and when we had a lot, and we were no huddle, and we could flip flop from MT to crystal wing to trips to two back, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, in no huddle. And in tempo, we look, we, we look the idea of making the defensive have alignment mistakes and, you know, being assigned, being aligned wrong as often as we possibly could. So we would use our tempo and our small playbook and our vast uh, amount of um, motions and, and formations to give us that, that little edge, what we could. So, if, and if we, if we run this, these exotic formations between Five and fifteen times a game, we would get nine times out of ten. We would get um, positivity out of all these when we approached them, and, and that's been our way of thinking. We did it in nine, we did it in nineteen, in twenty. This 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 particular thing wasn't in the playbook because we had we had a an actual QB play for us, and he was a, a more of a pocket passer. So our our, um, our thought process changed, and we we um you know we adapted our our two wrinkles for that year. Into something else, but um, we'll get onto our onto our huddle playbook, and we'll talk about um, you know, how we adapted it and what we did. Okay, and now this formation here was what we called Colt, and it's called Colt because it's in a pistol, and a Colt forty five is a pistol, and that that was why we called it Colt. Now, uh, now another analogy, it was just a simple. You know, um, image of, of, of what we're trying to, trying to achieve with the, the whole pistol and, and what we can get out of it. So, this was simply called Cole. Now, we were an X on, uh, Y on team from two by two from the get go. So, one of the first things that we have to say that when we, when we, when we had to teach is that when we're in, in cult, our X and Z are on. And that's one of the things that we, we had to do it. This is where the reps come into it. And that's, and that's what we did. Now we we've read pistol in the past, but it was from a two by two stance, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, or three by one. So in this case, all we did is bring our two fastest guys inside. Now when I say our fastest guys, when, we, when I say our fastest guys, when I called Colt or when we called pistol wing, it didn't matter who was was in there. My 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 group who ran Colt, that that little bundle of players, that little bubble. They knew who was going where, so I would put my two fastest guys at H and Y. Even if they were playing X and Z, they would flip flop and jump into those formations so that we had our fastest guys in position to um, get the football in the hands. Okay. Now we started out in preseason and in, in game one, where our, our our wings were a little bit more out. And not and not under under um under the tackles, but we found that the, the defenses were diving in. 
through the gap created. Sorry. So we felt the defensive would open into the gap created. So what we did in, the, in that situation was we, we pushed our guys almost behind the tackles directly. It, it shortened the pathway, but it, it gave us protection if we wanted to throw the football or if we wanted to run the football inside. And what we would do is that I would have a bunch of players in my, all drawn up, but we would only execute so many per week. We wouldn't give them everything every week so that if we play somebody a second time or a third time, or if, if, if people don't film on us and they see us in, in this formation, they're going to go, oh, yeah, they're going to run this. We would run something else completely because we, we got other things in the, in the arsenal. So when, when we when we lined it up, we were like, well, we know that we're an inside zone team, an outside zone team. Uh, we like to run birds. We like to run stand and out. We like to run sail. You know, we can't really run stick from this. But so we had like five or six, and we like to run jet. So we had five or six plays that we felt we could adapt to this situation. And this is what we did. So if we were just going to run verts, genuinely, everybody would just run verts. Our rules would apply if they were too high. And our back would probably stay home. So you, you would see. There's no new teaching. It literally is still verts. Okay. Now we only we could only really uh, we only really attempt to do three passes from this. One was vert, one was slant out, and one was sail. So if we ran sail from here, I've got a couple of clips of sail. When we're in two by two, we we run in our, our sail route. Nothing changes for us. They be farther back, but because they're fast and athletic guys, they can reach the um, the landmark and still make the and still make the route. It's a three step drop for our Q, for our QB. So wait, wait, my turn from a, a eight to ten um, out. It might be a five to six out. In theory, the concept is alive and well with no new teaching. They would know that we would go into our into our cult formation, run. Um, our sale concept, and we can still we can still use it. Okay, our, th our third one in in our past game, we slant out because it fits the narrative of our of our terror side guys having the space, and then create and then filling the space that they void with our hex with our H and our Y. On a simple out, on a simple out route or arrow route, as it would turn into, because it because they're almost like fullbacks, uh, like yeah, like fullbacks or running backs. Okay, and then we could turn to wheel if we wanted to. Um, but that was the that was the three pass plays that we had, and we wouldn't we would rep them, but we wouldn't show them every week, and we keep some back. So it would it would be dependent on what how we were doing, what how we were feeling, how comfortable we were running stuff, etc. etc. Okay, but remember, what, remember, I've said that our QB was erratic. He's learning, he's learning his trade, and we're trying to get our, our players the ball. So, one of the first things that we did was we knew that we could we could still run our inside zone and our outside zone for this formation. So, if we were gonna, if we were going to run inside zone, our two our two guys would just simply block. And then we would run inside zone left or right, depending on the call. Didn't affect the play, didn't affect the play, the line, anything. It's just a window dressing, but it worked for us. Okay. Now we didn't run outside zone often often in this, but what we, because of the way we run our jet. And the way we run our jet carried over to the way the way I logged it in this formation. So I let I, I basically use our jet. Uh, nuts and bolts to run from this. When we did run inside zone, our QB would always boot so that if they do keep if they do keep following um, so and so on on both our jet and both our inside zone, if they do keep crashing in, he can keep it because he's an athletic guy and we want to give him the football as much as possible. 
Here's how we, we attacked our jet. Basically, it was outside zone. Our, our line went outside zone rules. Everybody uh, stepped to the left or right, depending on where we were running. Our X and our Z would run off. Okay? There's no pre-snap motion. If, if, we, if we were in... Um, We were in, let's say we were in our, if we were in our, um, our queen formation and we, and we wanted to run jet, we would motion our guy across, okay? Our H would block, and our R would, and our R would block, okay? So all we did, because this was already in the playbook and we already run it, we basically transferred it over to this formation so that it was no new teaching. So just a different starting point. Giving us legs, giving us looks, giving us uh, other avenues to attack. So if you imagine that our, our warriors here, and we are the same, and the way that we called it as well, we would literally call it our, our, um, our jet plane, there's no deal called Twister. That's just that's just a bit like a so well, we would still call this play Twister, so it would be Cole Twister. So we we're using the the jet terminology, the jet blocking scheme, cheap install. We're just looking at it from a different viewpoint and a different uh, formation and a different angle. So if we were going to run this now, if we were going to call this Twister left from Cold, it would be from a it would be from a standstill. On the snap, we're going to go. Not a and it was never a pop pass. Okay, he would just turn it up, and our two guys would block. We ask our receivers to run to run their guys off, to create a space that we can fill. We know that when we put eight men in the box, uh, nine men in the box, the box is going to fill, so we can exploit the space on the outside. As I said before. Every time we run, every time we run this um, this jet, our quarterback would boot every single time, and I, it was on at his discretion when he wanted to keep it. If they get crashing down, if they, if they crashing down, chasing down the H, chasing down the Y, if they're crashing down, this is how we would um, compensate for that by boot by booting him. We also could, and we have done. Because because we run option from our other formations, we would we would we could call um, our twister and and then we would, our option which was called ghost. We would just call twister ghost, and ghost just means we running option the backside. So if we did that, we would we would take the handoff and run option the backside. No new teaching. Additional form additional formation, creating more creating more looks, creating more um, troubles to the defense, but with minimal insult time and minimal looks, and that's how we attack it. Now I've got a few clips lined up from from our 2019 season where we ran it, uh, and I'll just talk us through uh, the plays that we did do, the plays that 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 in, in a took place. Of. Not every play is a home run, and there are some some plays, and that's that's part of life. You now, but we I want to give you um. Examples of us doing it. I'm not going to draw it up on a, on a whiteboard and out for the best. Okay. So in this case, our very first play that we ran this ran this on, you can see that our um, our slots have dropped back into that into this into our pistol wing look. Okay. They've they've dropped back a little bit by week seven. They're, they're starting to see a little bit more up. We 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 look the Create more space for running the routes from the fact they're a little bit too tight. Okay, but in this case, you can see there it says hammer out, which is the inside, it's the inside run for us. This is dive. So we're setting it up for other stuff. You can see that if we if we wanted to take advantage of the one on ones, we could. If we wanted, if we wanted to tag on uh, a vert call, but they bail. And we just run an inside inside run 
minimal yardage, but we're not concerned about yardage here. We look, we're, we're talking about giving them a look, how they react to it, what we're going to do. And you can see our, Q, our QB will, will boot. Okay. Again, you can see our, our, our line has issues on this, but that's that's not the the, uh, the point of this of this video. And our receivers just go ahead and block straight up Mark Davis' man. Okay. You can see that it missed blocks. We have to, all we can do is teach you teach you a film about taking that first guy. Our receivers should be taking. Our receiver should be taking that first man. Still on the edge. We miss it. We actually don't even go for it. We got we got second level. Oh, you just shouting down a bit late. But that's that's our guy. Okay. So you can see the promotion now. The formation that we've used. There's no um. There's no deep learning. No intricate learning. We're running what we already run. But from a different look, okay. So you can see on this one it says uh, the formation is cold, which means that we're in our we're in our um our pistol look, our pistol wing look. It's twist the right, so that means we are going to run our jet to the right, but it's technically an outside zone, just because of where we're lined up. But our, our blocking rules and our receive rules are based on our jet concept. You can see we make a nice little gain on that one. Again, we want to run our first one. We want to see how that how that defense reacts to it, us running that thingy. We also pull our um, tackle on this. Our tackle pulls on outside zone. You can see they they all they all follow the um the back. We get blocking from our receiver there. Our QB has, has run his um his track, which we like. Our line are looking for work, but our line are a little bit uh young and raw. So we're gonna take you know some some losses. But you can see that we have we We take it. We see our receiver. He's going to get his, to get his, his, his most dangerous man, which he does. Our lineman misses his block, but our back our back doors him up. Then it's, then it's a case of numbers against numbers, and we've got our little fast guy, and he ends up making a guy miss, and we pick up three to four yards on that play. It's an earth, earth shattering. No major bus. No major breakaway for, for players. But we're moving this. We're moving the sticks, and we're moving. We're making yards without putting the ball in the air, without you know, in danger of our QB throwing uh, picks and making mistakes. We're basically giving the play, finding play, ways to give our player maker the football, and that's that's how we we attack this. Okay, and you can see that we're in. Um, same game. It's a little bit later on in the game, and as I said before, we may we may run this formation between five and fifteen times per game, as well as our other exotic formation. It depends on how many snaps we get and how how, how this formation is working on the day. But Raider was our sale call. You can see we're, we're in this point of the game now. In this game, our running back was injured, so in the, the guy in the black lead is not even an offensive player. He's a linebacker, so he's a, he did play a running back. Early on in his career, but he, he moved to linebacker and he was a linebacker in this game. So he's coming in green. There's another playbook. There's no what we're doing. He's he's attack. He, he step up to this as if he was in gun. He should be in pistol. But we we don't um identify quickly enough. I just take the play. But you can see that they're one high. 
We've got our two fast guys here. And what we're looking to do is break it out and run our sale concept, which we do a fantastic job of. Okay. Our running back shouldn't run around on this, it should stay home because it's the same rules apply to our regular concept. Again, didn't know what he was doing on the on the fly coaching, on the fly uh, positional changing on the day. No excuses, but it, it is what it is. You can see that's not that's not bad positioning from our two uh, our two slots. They're almost level. Again, it's basically steps because of where they are on the field. You can see that both slots are, are open. He goes he goes to our wide because our wide is our playmaker. Okay. Picks up a fantastic third down. He said we were in second and third and long. We make a nice first down off of this. No new teaching, just loading up in a different formation for our, our offense. And like I said before, when we call cold in our situation, the two receivers, if they, if one was a, one was a C and one was a H, they know that they would both go out and, and be out slow receivers. And if our two fastest guys were playing the inside at the time, they will stay inside. If they play on the outside, they will come inside. They know what their role is when we call Colt. That whole thing is encapsulated in one word. Each, everybody knows their, their role. Everybody knows what they're doing. There's no real pressure from them. I, we know our, our, our line is comfortable. Our QB has time to sit there. Steps in the pocket. That's a great throw. And we get a first down. So there we basically use, we've used our spread offense. We are a spread team, but we're a multiple team. I mean, we're using what we do um, from a pistol wing set. Now we didn't have we didn't add any of the pistol wing or pistol T T wing stuff into our playbook. Now we didn't do any of the that, that back motioning from our from our wing backs, nothing like that. We didn't do any aspects of that. We just kept it as bland as possible, just to give us some wiggle room, some leg room. And a different look and a different and making the defense think. What how do we defend this? Um and then what are they seeing on film and what can we do different? Like we we never ran this, we never ran this concept from, from this formation until today. So there would be no film of us running this until this one. So they, they wouldn't know what we're gonna do from it. They would have assumed it was gonna be a jet or an inside run. It's the same game. We're, we're farther on now. I think we're in the fourth quarter. Again, we're trying to we're trying to hold on to a lead here. Our QB has has, has started off hot, but he's he's cooled down. He's now making mistakes. They're bringing the pressure on him. So we we you know how can we find ways to calm him down and just set him down and and keep moving the chains and keep moving the football. Okay. We got we got a, another rookie down here at, at D Neg and some playing time. It's fourth quarter. Okay. We got a rookie, a rookie running back now, because of our um, our linebacker was doing double dip. They so needed a breather. You can see he's twist that, which means it's going to be our jet game, which means the jet's going to go to the left. It's jet, but it's technically outside zone from where our, our, we were aligned, where we're standing. You know, if we were, if we were in, in in gun, now this would be an outside zone run. We we come across the face of our QB anyway, so this will be an outside run for our, for our our QB's perspective. From our lawyer's perspective, it just looks different because of how we are. And you can see they're they now all crushed up. With one high safety. We could exploit the deep ball if we want if we, if we wanted to. We're trying to keep clip the uh, chew clock here. You can see that when we hand the ball off, he has to get someone. He has to try and get someone. There's a lot of running to do. Yes, try and get someone. Probably this guy right here. They have to try and get somebody. That's their that's their target. That's their aim. You can see they they both attack it really well. They both get hands on people. And we run, we run past we like a big first down right there. It's a way of getting in twenty three case was our best athlete on the team hands down. Eleven was our second best athlete on the team. Both speed merchants, both excellent athletes. 
Balfe, very good with ball in hand. Easiest way possible to get them the ball without converting them to running back. A simple addition to our formation sheet. Just by something that we've seen off a clinic or we've seen off of uh, watching many many zooms over over the course of time, uh, where you jot down in your in your scribble books what you know how you would do this, how you would do that. I'm sure we we all we all uh, have done that over the over the course of time many many times, and I'm not different to, to anybody else. We scribble all the time and we draw things up. How would we use this? How would we use that? Same as stack formation and empty and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And you. You try and get in as much as you can. And we, I've always been a fan of adding two exotics per year and using those two, and they may return next year. They may, they may go into the, into the book for years to come. But this is just a great way of getting your guys the football without any expense. There, some great blocking from our receivers and our, and our middle back. Can we pick up a big first down? Okay, different week, different opponent. We also have uh, triangles of film in this in this version. Um, so we start uh, we start the game. You can see on the clock it's played two. We start the game in this formation because it's never been they've never seen it on film. We didn't we didn't exchange film on these. They've now scouted us. We started it in this in this formation just to see how they would react to it and how we could we could make it work. They expected us to be two by two or three by one because we were we were, we were a multiple air ride team. We come out in a, a pistol wing look, you know, gives them food for thought. It changes their um, their mentality and how they're going to defend us. So this, is, this is a simple uh, twister right. Okay, we make up some yards there. As I say, on the snap, our, our receiver has to block, and our running back has to block, creating the folding lane for our running back, uh, our jet guy, our running back to attack. We want to, we want to see our outside guys run off their um, their defenders. Now, in this case. This guy was our was that our H on the day. He he wasn't um our X's way over there, but our H was flipped over to our Z because we, because we caught of our cult call. He knew straight away that when we call cult, he's gonna go play play Z. And our H and our Z come across and they switch places. Out there, sorry, maximum miss again. It's the simplest way of getting our ball in hand to our playmaker. Now, I will show the next player because it, it, you don't make it. Oh, this is back, it's the back angle of it. Got a bit of double angles. Okay, you can see where we're lined up. We're now literally on the uh, outside hip of the tackle. This is how we, we adapted for being farther out in, in, in pre season, and we felt that our defense was, was driving in the gaps. We felt that our defense was driving in these gaps. Because we were too far out, but we condensed it a little bit more. We condensed it some more to give our, our inside runs better protection. You see, there's no pre snap motion like it would be for yet. We just, just on the snap, and you can see that our, our QB takes it away. 
Let me just go ahead and make some yards. It's seven or eight yards on the, on the opening play of the drive, which we happen to really like. Again, young goal line, not the best block. But in, in the case of, and the, and the reason why a lot of us run yet, is that it, it misses that whole, it misses that, this whole block. So you, you, you're basically allowing yourself to wash that away by getting your guy outside quickly. And that's what we do in this case. Now I'll show you the next player because we, we're still in the same formation. And now it's just a simple case of handing the ball off inside. Okay, we pick up minimal yards, but it's a first down and we move the chains. And you can see that we're in the same formation. It's the next play on the on the chart. So we've gone from, from uh, get to inside zone. Back to be booted. And we make a first down just by one little formation wrinkle. Watch it on the back side of the angle. You can see we're still, we're still lined up in the same way. We we now we now want our we now want our guys to go ahead and block these if possible. Most dangerous man. No new teaching. This, this is basically if we were running it anyway, they would be blocking. He takes his man, he takes the outside guy and leaves and leaves the inside guy for our tackle. He misses, he leaves him because he's been running down. But we still make enough yards for the first down. Again, rookie tackle, making rookie mistakes, but he's going along with the, the things that he's taught in, inside down. Leave that in man and look for work at the second level if he does. And our QB is keeping eye on how they attack that. If they keep driving in, they'll pull it, which we're going to pick up later on. Okay. We're later on in the game now. We're in the fourth quarter. We're running down the clock because we're in the lead. So our personnel might change. You can see we've got, we've got a rookie out here now. We've got, we've got our rookie quarterback in the game, getting some valuable reps because we're in the lead and we're trying to run down the clock. We got we got we got spot guys here who don't normally play. However, we've however we've we've kept our playmaker in at, at Y. He's now taken up the high position, and we've kept our, our our running back in just to give us some um some wrinkle some uh, ballers to carry the football and keep the chains moving. So in this case again, it, it, this time it's going to be a twister to the. To the left, so we're gonna have our, our bigger body guy who doesn't normally carry the football in this situation carry it. He does a heck of a job. He just takes the straight hand off, he gets vertical, and we pick up our first down and more. Watch it again. So we've got, we've got a rookie quarterback in there. You can see it's basically for just handing off. Like you would in the outside zone, no new teaching for him. Our blocking rules are the same, our handoff is the same. Simple, minimal uh, teaching. And one of the things I love to say, cheap install. I give me boost to the backside. Excellent job of keeping his feet moving and making the, and making the yards count. That's a heck of a job. See where we can see from the from the ang a different angle. You can see where our where our slots are lined up. You can see how they're all condensing down because we're in it, we're in a, a nine man box. So we know that if we can block this guy, then we should have legs to the to the outside. As long as our X runs away his defender. We get a block from our receiver. Our running back hasn't had anybody to block at the start because then we've always got to the edge. There we go. In this situation, I'd like for our running back to go and find somebody. If he needs to peel back, 
to go ahead and peel back and find somebody to block, create that lane, create that avenue for our, our runner. Okay, you can see our running back's out here. He should now be looking to peel back and take somebody out and take somebody out because at the moment he's got nobody. And now his body's coming, he could have got one of those guys and made that made that lane and that avenue a little bit easier for our, our ball carrier. Good. Heck of an effort from our, our receiver. And we make that first down. You can see it's the very next play on the, on the play call. It's 136 now. So we're staying in the same form, formation. We are grinding down clock. No new personnel. No personnel changes. And we just switch it up and we change sides. It gets pulled down, but we've already created um, yardage and a first down off of it. So our guy has to go and find some work. And our running back has to do a better job of finding work. Uh, our receiver does a really good job of, of reading his back and using him as a blocker. He just doesn't go in, he doesn't go in and get anyone. He should be engaging now. We're looking for work back inside. We're poor blocking the side. The play. Gives us legs and gives us the first down. You can see that, that defensively now. They've got two guys back there. You know, we, we could run the ball inside, but we, we continue to utilize our numbers on the outside. We need to run these guys off and block them. Which he does, you can see. While our Z is not a, a speedy guy because he's, he's in the wrong position, he still managed to run off his corner, creating the space for our, our H to run his jet into. We've got all this foot, we've got all this space here to run into, which is what we like. It's a missed block, but we still pick up a nice first down run. Which from the front angle, I don't think you can really see that we need to be on that other, on that other angle. Yeah, you didn't see anything you don't see on that, on that one. So you can see we're in 137. This is our third play of the series. We're still in the same formation. We're still grinding clock, nothing new. They're still sitting way back for some reason, even though we're, we're in the lead. They're not being aggressive on defense. Okay. What you will see there on this on this on this variant of it is that now we've called we've called this uh twist the ghost. The QB hands it off at this point on this one. But if you watch our running back, he's now instead of leading, he's now gonna Run the track for the for the option, okay. We don't hand it, we don't keep it. We hand it off, which is a good good job. We get blocking from our our guys. Vertical run from our, our receiver, our player maker, our best player. You can see that we're off to the races, making yards again. So we've moved the ball thirty yards in three plays, just off of this 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 jet zone play. Hybrid. Okay. We're, we're in this situation, we're now going at tempo and we're literally calling the same play over and over again. So we're just calling, uh, rat, we've called it Rattler in this season. When we shout Rattler, that means it's the same play. So he's called the same play four times, three, four times on the trot. And we're going to continue to do so. Okay, this puts the defense in conflict, and the defense uh, will, uh, in giving us the opportunity to catch them uh, misaligned and then um, out of position. Hand it off. You can see, when we watch it back and from, our, we have to do a better job of blocking these things up. But this was week two of the season. So, you know, we, we have got our uh, our own problems. 
do this. But I, it's a heck of an effort from our, our rookie tackle to get down there and block somebody. You've got to love that. And our player makes make this. And we got in. I don't think you're going to get anything from the back angle or the front angle that we haven't seen already. No, let's just see. Let's just see if, if let's just see what happens with our running back because on the next on the next snap we we do run the option, and I want to know I want to like to what why the QB started to keep it on that one rather than this one. So he does crash down a little bit. So you can see why he would decide to keep that football. We want them to chase that player down from the backside. We want them to chase them down so that we have an answer to what they what they're doing. We want we love to answer what they do with a complimentary play. We did a video with Coach Baker uh, last week and the complimentary plays. And this is one of ours. So once they, once we show something, we've got to answer for it and we compliment what we're doing. With another end of the wrinkle. As you can see, this is our third player, or yeah, our third player in, in a row. We're in the same formation. Okay. So on this one, you can see that they do crash in. Okay. So our, our QB pulls it. You can see that our running back is in, is in his, his track. He's in his relationship with it already there with the QB. In theory, this is good. But we missed the block from the outside and, the, and our QB instead of getting upfield. Panicked a little bit because he's a rookie. And he's only run this in practice. Pitches the ball off, but we're now nine yards deep. And we end up making nothing. We end up losing five yards. Okay? But we like it. Because it's a, it, it's an answer on film for what we're running. So we know that if we're running this this jet over and over again, and they start crashing down, our answer to it, or one of our answers to it, is for an option on the backside. Okay. Again, this QB is a rookie. He's not a mobile QB. He's more of a pocket passer anyway. But he has that green light because because we've called Twist the Ghost. He now has that green light to hand that ball off or keep the football it's totally on him and out of our hands. Once that ball, once they're lined up and the ball snaps, it's no longer in my control. It's on the QB's hands and mine. So while we, while we feel we probably could have blocked it up and ran down so well, I didn't hate at the time. I still don't hate now the fact that he pulled it. So I like the idea that he knows they're crashing down. We should be able to get, get some uh, legs off it. But one missed block, you see our guy there, he's the man. One missed block, creates a, a whole heap of trouble. Our QB still gets the ball off. It's a great job of doing that. Our, our back does a great job of receiving it, but we end up losing yards. The flag is irrelevant because they'll take the loss. And that, and that is that play in the nutshell. So it's a compliment play. It's ineffective on this situation. But in general, you can see where we're building and what we're doing. Okay, so you can see that our line just makes some mistakes there, and that's why this gets blown up. Three of our five linemen in this game. This is their second ever start. So you know you know you're gonna have two problems. You can see basically our line just stand up and for the most part do absolutely nothing. So whatever they they were thinking, they uh you know they got it wrong. But we live to fight in the day. You know, it's not the end of the world. Okay. Different opponent. Uh, this is like week four or five. So we've, we've run this play a few more times now. But we only run it sparingly. And each week, each game week, like if we've run that ghost and it's on film, we probably won't run that ghost now. Until we feel we need it, we're not going to keep running it, putting it out there. Uh, it, it'll be game game week specific each time we do it, and if that's not in the if that's not in the arsenal that week, then we won't really run it. This is still going to be twister, okay? And uh, I think that's one of the things that we hate as coaches here. 
He cuts back. He cuts back across the grain. You know, one of the things that we absolutely hate. And then I've got my little GB right there. Throwing block for him. But this, this is just setting up. And the reason why I show this play because we run it again. We run another player to get this play off with. It's just in the, it's just in the, uh, the formation. And what we're doing, we make yards off of it because we basically let our athlete be an athlete. This is not, this is not nothing on us. Our players, our players are supposed to go right. You can see that our QB does pull it and does uh, do the zone read aspect of this. And running back has a better angle on his block. They close his down pretty fast. But they, um, they kind of came for him, him bringing it back. So they would have seen film on us. They would have seen us run that jet. And therefore, they, they may know what's going to go on. So you can see this is the next, the next play on the on the clock. Play 25, same game, same drive. We're still in the same formation. You can see the only, the only install for us is moving our slots. From five yards on the side of the tackles to behind the tackle, and that's it. No new, no new, uh, no new teaching, no new um, uh, learning. It's just a case of a different starting spot, a different landmark. Okay, and now on this one, we run four verts. I've shown this clip before. We don't complete it, but the promise is there. Ideally, we would love to see it on right because we have the grass and the space. Because that they're, they're, they're condensing them because of the nightmare in the box. This gives us a, this gives us the opportunity to throw the football deep. Actually, we check checks the vert there. Our two slots go forward. Our backs in the block. You should have gone to the right. It goes left. The ball's incomplete, and that's that's the way that it is. So that's just another another. I wanted to give you an example of us running running plays out of our playbook uh, from this formation. One more clip. Okay, this is our first game of the season. You can see that we are in Colt, we are in Crystal Right. Okay, so we're setting this up, and as, as I've said before. Our QB has the green light to pull it whenever he wants to. So if, if we run this two, two or three times already, and we are just running twister, trying to set up other things later on. Our QB pulls the football. You can see the whole the whole of the defense is, is now pushed to the, to the right hand side. Our QB keeps it. Takes a, a huge gain off of it. Nice, a nice keep it. Keeper on this one. You do a great job of seven the bandit because I, the, our, our receiver thought he had the ball. You can see that our, our little receiver is a great job of taking his man. Excellent job. Our back comes along and chips him. So if we had have actually carried it, we still would have had a big game with game to the left, to the right, sorry. But we pull it, and basically the only reason why this, this didn't go even further than it should do is because our, our ex guy misses his block when he's supposed to be running them off. But again, as I said from day one, when we're, when, when we're teaching this and installing this, we won't have our fastest guys out there. Normally our fastest guys will be out there. But when we say run them off, we expect them to get vertical and make those DBs turn the hips and run. A little bit different when you're a big body guy out there. He's not the fastest guy. You can see that he tries to uh, sit there and engage in him. Horrible job of him. This is block, but you know, our QB makes him miss. And we take that first down run. Another another wrinkle to that this formation, and the thing that we do, as I said, we've got complementary plays added on. We've got QB read, we've got QB option. You can also add a screen in. There's various things that we could do to it, but we only had legs for so much because we would only run. We don't only add so much per per game week because we had two formations that we would add, we would, we would add in, and we probably share five plays each from each one.
Does he hand it off? Give it to football. Makes a man miss. Gets the first down. And that there in game one is a converted ball receiver with the ball in his hand, making yards and getting us the first down, moving the chains in a game where we ran the football a lot because we were trying to bleed him in and, and break him in gently. We didn't want to uh, put too much pressure on his shoulders by throwing the football 25, 35 times a game. We kept it minimal. So we knew that we had to get ways to get him, get our, our, our back and our two uh, playmakers of football. And this is one of the ways that we did it. Uh, so hopefully, guys, about 10 or 12 clips there of us running it from various um, running various places from our, 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 uh, our pistol wing formation. Hopefully it's something that you've enjoyed and something hopefully you can take away. Uh, as always, I appreciate you guys jumping on and watching and, and taking part. Uh, but for today, guys, that'll be it. So uh, take care and I'll see you all soon.